People think that curtains are ju just about putting fabric over a window or closing a window. In fact, it's so much more than that. It takes us back to the days of, of, of hunter-gatherer, where people would go out of the caves and go and get beautiful adornments and beautiful objects and practical de decorations to make, to make living more pleasant and more fun and to increase the workability and to in increase the experience of being alive. Choosing a fabric for a window is an interactive experience. It's about relating to the person who is selling it to you. It's about identifying with the yarn and Id identifying with the, with the design. It's, a, it's, a, it's got to be an extension of who you are and it's a grace that you bring to your bedroom or to your living room. Beautiful Fabrics is a gift that you give your, your community and your family and your, your home. I was little and I, I'd spend every afternoon at the fabric store. And I promised myself that I would never ever get into fabric. That was the only commitment I really made myself. It didn't matter what happened to me in life, I would never get into fabric. Many years, years later, my family's business went, went bankrupt. And I started panicking and I thought, where do I go to? What, what would I do in the world? I stutter, I didn't have any formal training. And I worried about my, my, my future. One of, the, one of the, the buildings that was being sold off had a few rolls of fabric, which by that stage had become vintage. So I, I applied for a, for a stall outside Constantia farm stall, a hawker stall. And I'd pack the car up every morning with my trestle table and these two or three rolls of fabric. And I'd drive out and I'd pack all my fab fabrics out and I'd sell fabrics along the side of the road. At the same time, sim simultaneously, I'd drive to Constantia Village and I'd go into pick and pay and I'd stop these ladies and I'd say, Madam, can I do furnishings for you? And can I make blinds and curtains? And I, I, I was young. And this is probably, t this is 15 or 20 years ago. People were, were, were very accommodating and very gracious, but I think now it, it must have been fairly random. This young colored Muslim boy asking if he could furnish their, their homes. I, if I think back on it, I, I, I really acknowledge my, myself for the, the courage it took. It took real guts. What really took my business to another level. Many years ago, about 15 years ago, I had a coach who said to me, Sally, what would you do if you never had to worry about money? If money wasn't a factor, what would you be doing with your life? And I thought, sure, if I could be anything. And I closed my eyes, and as I, I opened them again, I said, if I didn't have to worry about money or selling anything, I'd be doing exactly the same thing. The only di difference is I wouldn't have to sell fabrics, I wouldn't have to try and encourage people to buy anything or persuade people, there'd be no force, there'd be no selling. Instead, I'd be, I'd be a co contribution, I'd be empowering people by having them be beautiful housekeepers and empowering people by having beautiful homes, beautiful offices. It was, it was such an empowering context for me that I, I started getting exciting, excited about fabrics. So instead of being a salesperson, I was now contribution to people's lives and I was in the business of empowering people versus selling. People only have curtains made at pivotal times in their lives. When they buy their first home, people are very excited and they want something cost effective and then they've worked a bit and they've enjoyed it a bit and then they move to their dream home or their trophy home. Then it's about putting their personal stamp, it's about claiming their place in the world. And we, em we empower and just hold the space for them. And then they, they come back to us when they're doing baby rooms. And again, we're part of these, these families' lives. And then 
those same children then bring their parents in and said, we're now moving mum and dad from the family home into a retirement village. So it's a, it's a, it's a very special thing for us to be part of these families and to, to hold the space for their transformation. I began tra traveling the world and seeing how I, I could bring my clients better fabrics and have them get a better, better deal. And then I went to, to Europe and I went to, I went to these old historic malls and they were always small and they were, they were usually around old industrial centers and old, old towns. And they'd be small and clean, so clean that you could eat off, off the floor. Some of these, these malls had been the families for gen generations, one or two hundred years. And I loved I love the integrity. They could tell us about the yarn. They could tell us about the, the lineage and tell us about how it fitted into the culture of that, that particular region. And I, I was so excited about, about what these fabrics stood for and about the integrity that I, I thought to myself, this is what I want to represent. This is what I'm, I want to bring to the world. This is, a match for what I'm committed to in the world. And it, it takes us back to the old Silk Road from China, bringing back beautiful silks from India and China. And then it, it comes for, for, forward to the Italian weavers and beautiful tap, tapestries and the, the Belgians and, and the, the Dutch weaving the jacquards and, and velvets and dobies and it, it's, it's a sense of mastery and it's, it's a set of values that I'm com committed to representing and selling on. It's, it's not just about a piece of fabric. You're selling an experience. You're selling a way of being. So buying and selling fabrics from Europe is such a privilege because it's not just about a piece of fabric. You're selling an experience and you're selling a way of being. Clients know that if we're sending curtains to, to Perth or to, to London, what we ultimately committed to as an organization is customer delight. Doing furnishings is such an intimate and personal pro process. And it's, it's a journey that, that we partner with the client and we embark on it together. It's exciting and it's scary because it's, it's a huge cost and there's a risk. So it's, it's about being res responsible with that. And I always tell clients to listen to the room, listen to the space. Every home decorates itself. Spend some time in, in, that, in, in that space before you furnish it. Listen to the wind, listen, listen to how the rain falls, listen to the wind, feel where the sun comes up and how it sets. And if you listen carefully enough, the room will tell you what it needs and f furnish it with what, what you resonate with. You'll feel what is, is, is right for that, that space. It is such a privilege to serve. I always tell, tell my clients that I'm so grateful that they've chosen to work with me. I'm so honored to be able to serve them and their families, to work in their, their homes, to be welcomed into, their, into their, their daughter's rooms and their granny's rooms and their lounges and their living rooms. These are very sacred spaces. And they invite me and my staff in. And it is such a privilege. I, I, I get excited just thinking about it. Excited about the way people trust me. And about honoring that trust. I want people to, to take the, the sense of relatedness that they get here and the, the power in communication and take that out into the world, out into South Africa. And bring us a powerful sense of communication to their families and their organizations and their communities. And 
that'll transform the world. It absolutely tra transforms every single time.